The severe undulating erosion upon the walls of the Sphinx enclosure undoubtedly showed that the Sphinx had been heavily weathered long before the Sahara became a desert. Therefore, one must suspect that it could indeed be over 9,000 years old. Not knowing exactly how much rainfall there's been in the distant past, the Sphinx could indeed be far older than this. The most notable scholarly advocates, Robert Scotch, argues that the Sphinx may be far older than 12,000 years. Robert Baval and Graham Hancock proposed that the Sphinx may have been built around 10,500 BC, during the last age of Leo. Anthony West believes everything on the Giza Plateau testifies to an advanced, secure, and long-settled civilization. Therefore, he suggests that the Sphinx may have been built not during the age of Leo, but a whole processional cycle earlier, in around 36,000 BC, a date he feels is more in keeping with the history of Egypt, as chronicled by certain Egypt kings. Regardless of an exact date, all of these talented Egyptologists propose a date set much further back within history than currently accepted, and they have provided considerable evidence to back up such conclusions. At the time of disclosure, the argument sent shockwaves through the Egyptologist establishment. Not because of the datings, Egyptologists and mainstream historians have grown quite inept at ignoring data, but more because it was realized that there is indeed no other explanation for their arguments. There is little doubt that the Sphinx enclosure was subject to severe erosion within its lifetime, and although it could have been explained away as a naturally formed enclosure, we fortunately know from analysis that the limestone blocks dug out from there were then used within the building of nearby Sphinx Temple. Interestingly, no other site in Egypt shows the same type or degree of erosion. Was the evidence hidden away? concealed from the public in what could only be called a conspiracy. Sediments surrounding the base of the monuments and a once existing watermark upon the stones halfway up the Great Pyramid sides indicate just that. Two-inch thick salt incrustations once found within inner chambers, silt sediments rising to 14 feet around the bases of the pyramids found to contain seashells and fossils that have been radiocarbon dated at nearly 12,000 years old, have indeed slowly vanished over the years. These sediments could only have been deposited in such great quantities by major sea flooding. A watermark was also once clearly visible on the limestone casing stones of the Great Pyramid. These stones were unfortunately unknowingly removed by invading Arabs. These watermarks were halfway up the sides of the pyramid, or about 400 feet above the present level of the Nile River, 200 feet above the base. It seems the last remaining shred of evidence, the enclosure, survived due to the talented individuals that were required to spot it. Individuals who are thankfully on our side. We recently covered the astonishing rock-cut structures known as Madain Sala. Located within modern-day Saudi Arabia, they are largely attested by most modern-day academia as being rock-cut tombs made by a civilization 2,000 years ago. However, the precision involved in the cutting of such a remarkable collection of buildings will not have escaped the astute-minded among us. Just how did these civilizations, two or even 3,000 years ago, manage to create such awe-inspiring structures? with the tools available at that time within known history. Just as the pyramids in Giza are attributed to the Egyptians, it is highly possible these claims of ownership were but mere inhabitations of sites far older. Many people who have investigated these rock-cut tombs have come away with a conclusion that some of the architecture is so precisely cut, to recreate such straight angles would require the use of laser technology. A presumption also shared by us. It is therefore delightful when one stumbles upon something such as Al Nasla. Located within Tamiya Oasis, also within Saudi Arabia, was this utterly perplexing stone left as a lasting signature of the tool used to create Madain Saya? Discovered by Charles Hoover in 1883, was this amazing megalith cut in twine with a laser? or indeed some form of highly advanced, highly ancient precision equipment of some form? If not, what could have created such a miraculous split so finely made and so straight within such an enormous rock? 
A perfect line straight through the center left perfectly balanced upon two separate bases for untold millennia. Interestingly, in 2010, the SCTH, or Saudi Commission for Tourism and National Heritage, announced the discovery of a rock near Tama, with a hieroglyphic inscription of Pharaoh Ramses III upon it. Researchers have therefore hypothesized that Tama was a part of an important land route between the Red Sea coast of the Arabian Peninsula and the Nile Valley. Was al Nasla, along with Madei Sawya, constructed by the same individuals as the Great Pyramids of Giza? Furthermore, archaeologists have discovered cuneiform inscriptions, possibly dating from the 6th century BC, pertaining to a legendary ancient civilization known as Oasis City. Mentioned within the Old Testament, it was said to have been a highly developed civilization with complex buildings and an advanced knowledge of waterworks. The oldest mention of Oasis City appears as Tiamat in Assyrian inscriptions dating as far back as the 8th century BC. Were these mysterious people the culprits? With such precisely made rock-cut structures found within the same landscape, structures that many have reluctantly concluded display evidence of advanced stone-cutting technology, we find the existence of al Nasla highly compelling. We previously covered an intriguing discovery made within a forest in Oklahoma, discovered by David Campbell and his wife while following up on a curious lead. This discovery, as previously discussed, is a compelling link to Waffle Rock, another anomalous relic we've previously covered. Embedded in the dirt where it struck the ground many years prior, numerous specialists have postulated that it could be a fragment of an artificial craft which disintegrated in the sky. What was astonishing regarding David's discovery was the similar structure of the object which they discovered, also partially buried and scattered amongst the woods, possibly the debris of this once enormous craft, created using an intricate layering design of unknown metals, minerals and alloys. Although further studies of this compelling discovery have yet to be established, it is with understandable caution that those with knowledge of the area move forward. It must be noted that Waffle Rock, once a local landmark, had attracted a flurry of attention from geologists, scientists and ufologists who had begun to ponder its unique and otherworldly characteristics. That was until the United States government moved in and submerged the artifact under several meters of water. The entire town which had built up around this ancient object were forced out to make way for a reservoir which flooded the entire area. We have therefore undoubtedly been compelled to research further regarding David's amazing discovery, also due to our extensive understanding of the studies undertaken upon Waffle Rock and this site's similarities with such. And unsurprisingly, we've not been disappointed with what's been unearthed. It seems folks have been fully aware of the unusual, quote, mineral deposits within the Oklahoma area for quite some time. It seems possible that the entire area is an ancient crash site of a once enormous alien craft. Known as the Oklahoma Mystery Stones, could these unexplainable fragments have once been part of an ancient spaceship? Found throughout Oklahoma, they are often mistaken for man-made objects, this clearly being due to their artificial appearance. And Oklahoma is not the only place we feel there could indeed be fragments of an ancient alien craft which crashed here on Earth. The founder of Mystery History gained access to detailed sonographic imagery showing the bottom of the Baltic Sea late last year. And now, due to the findings which were chased up by mainstream media outlets in early January, several other independent investigators surrounding Ocean X's discovery have arrived at the same suspicions. We strongly feel, due to our research, that the Baltic Sea anomaly is but a fragment of a much larger crash area which covers the seabed. Could these two objects have been part of the same ancient event? It seems while trying to solve one mystery surrounding these anomalies, you will often be confronted with several more. As always, thanks for watching.